and that's what we're facing with the oil prices right now Absolutely. as fuel prices increase. Sir, you have a question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, my question is, what if we use a concept uh, that matter has three forms, which is liquid, solid, and gas, and you can't destroy it? And to that gentleman on the recycle side, he says 75 percent of our waste, then that's where we got to restructure how we dispose of our garbage, meaning we do not have to have it as garbage if we put it in separate compartments or whatever and just reuse it. For instance, you, if I'm you, sorry, what's your question? My question, what if in the jail system or from day one, like uh, Barack wants to start education all the way through college being free? So how can we approve that? Okay. So we, we've talked a couple of times about how uh, the, those who are incarcerated might have a, a, an important role in the green collar economy. Any ideas on yeah, what Bill, that would look like? But, Bill, I think this whole thing of not knowing, because the audience brought up, how did they not know that it was building? we got to stick to the... <laughs> but that's no education. That's right. what the gentleman is talking about. How do we get this education to us? Somebody's knowing it. Right. So we need to know how do we filter this education to us, the people who really need to know. Right. Let, let's address the question, the question he ultimately raised, which is how do we incorporate those who are incarcerated into the green collar economy? I'd like to answer that. Um, actually, there's a number of ways. One of the ways is to educate incarcerated individuals on how to weatherize and how to green. Actually, start with our own prison system because that would give them a hands-on way to begin. It would not cost the city or the state lots of money, and it would give people an opportunity, some hope that when they got out, they would have a skill and an ability that they learned within the prison system. We can start within the system and grow from there. And it would save money. Absolutely. The, the prisons would run cheaper, and that creates more money to do more things. Absolutely. Let's take another question. Hello, yes, my name is Rocco Williams from Kennedy King College, and I recently visited the Smart House where they have conservation programs where you can conserve and I was wondering why aren't there more houses being built like the smart house at the Museum of Science and Industry? Anyone have a view on that? Anyone care to respond? Uh, 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 one of the reasons why there are not a lot of uh, smart houses that are being built is, of course, the expense of building them. The solar panels, the technology that are applied in that smart house is, is expensive compared to the uh, traditional way of uh, constructing these houses. Uh, so what uh, the government or um, local governments could do is to offer incentives for people who would like to build smart houses or greenhouses uh, to give them favorable uh, terms on their loans or guaranteed loans. Comment? Um, an example of that is uh, within Chicago, because uh, we're planning on um, reducing emissions 80% by 2050, a lot of businesses are giving out green roof grants, which grant um, $5,000 to anyone who wants to install a solar panel on top of their building, or that they're paying um, with the green permit plan program, that they're giving out 25000 to anyone who wants to create an entire green building. So, so to answer that question, if more people know this information here in Chicago, then you see more smart It all houses. has to do with education. Because some of those programs are in place. We'll take another question. Yeah, I'm uh, Dejan Solomon from Olive Harvey, and I, I, I had a comment and a question. Just your question. All right, well, all right, I wanted to ask a question like, when, when y'all was talking like um, about like, what, what can we do to make the green movement successful, I, I wanted to know if y'all could like touch more on the principles that like Van Jones um, wrote about in his book. And he said that we need to adopt as a people in order for this movement to be successful, just as other movements in the past. I just wanted to know. Who if feels comfortable with enumerating some of Van Jones's main points? Well, um, I got three words for you: social uplift, environmentalism. We have, uh, we need to create a coalition of, you know, to unite people like the laborers, uh, the activists, the intellectuals, the, you know, we need to, business leaders, we need to get them all together. And all of us need to share the same burdens and, and as well as get the same rewards and risks. Take Excellent. Any, and risks. Anyone else? Want to summarize Van Jones, uh, enumerate some of his key points? Well, one of the main ideas that he spoke of is looking at po a past popular movements and that have succeeded 
And so we see the involvement with the ministry. We see the involvement of people of all types of faith. We see young people getting together. We look at activism in the past that's worked, and we can follow some of those basic principles of people working together. Isn't it true that every major movement, social movement, seems to start with young people, not just here, but people. all over the world, and not just now, but all throughout history? It starts with young people. That's how Obama got elected. Mm -hmm. it Absolutely. Was, it was essentially a youth movement that became a populist movement. Yeah. It, it, it's, it reminds me of an earlier era in America when President Roosevelt was faced with a similar crisis and he came up with the New Deal. And now we have President Obama and he seems to be emphasizing a Green New Deal. Take a look, see what you think. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. We are stricken by no plague of locusts compared with the perils which our forefathers conquered we have still much to be thankful for. Nature still offers her bounty, and human efforts have multiplied it. Plenty is at our doorstep. Practices of the unscrupulous money changers stand indicted in the court of public opinion, rejected by the hearts and minds of men. We may now restore that temple to the ancient truth. I know that for many Americans watching right now, the state of our economy is a concern that rises above all others. The impact of this recession is real, and it is everywhere. We have lived through an era where too often short-term gains were prized over long-term prosperity. The surplus became an excuse to transfer wealth to the wealthy instead of an opportunity to invest in our future. Well, that day of reckoning has arrived, and the time to take charge of our future is here. It's an agenda that begins with jobs. As soon... I can't tell you about everyone in the government, but I can tell you, Barack Obama gets it. And that's why he's bringing this to us, because he's the person, I think more so than anyone I've ever seen, understands the problems that we're facing, and frankly, the dire need that we have to correct these problems immediately. I mean, the truth of the matter is, we study what's going on with greenhouse gas emissions, we have to peak no later than 2015. That's six years from now. And the only way we're going to get there is to have a, a full-scale plan for implementation ready by 2012. And it's today's 2009. We only have a few years left. The Green New Deal, what's it going to take? Very fancy term, but what's it going to take, Earl? Actually, no, it's going to start not just with the politicians. In this term, we call environmentalists, tree huggers. That's where it's always sort of stayed. Now we have the strategy is getting it down to the people who, are, who it really affects and who, who, who is going to affect the most when we talk about this deal. So Obama is really preaching it. It's coming it down. But how do we get it down here? So the strategy is starting with the churches, the communities, in other words, instead of preaching that this earth was going to end because the Bible said it, we got to talk about the bigger picture. We are causing this. Now we can fix this. In other words, instead of dismissing the environmental problems we've seen as apocalyptic and, you know, fulfillment of prophecy, we should realize that we're stewards of earth. Correct. Dominions over, and we're destroying it, and now we got an opportunity to fix it. And not only have we have an opportunity to fix it, we need to fix it and put people back to work fixing it. So Obama's doing his part. It's time for us down here on the ground.